Does commercial real estate do better under a Republican presidency or a Democratic? Here are some statistics on that multifamily rent growth. During President Obama's term, 2.7% increase in multifamily rates compared to 2% and 1.6% under Republican presidencies. Does real estate do better under a Democratic president or a Republican president? The answer may surprise you. We're going to look at data to see which assets and specifically what asset types of real estate do better historically under a Republican or a Democratic president. All right, so one of the first things that we have to do is we have to break this down by asset class. All of the studies and all of the data I've seen that refer to real estate as a monolithic huge industry are completely useless, okay? If you're watching this video, odds are you only own maybe two, maybe three, maybe four asset types at most, and therefore general statements about real estate in general are not gonna apply. And so I'm gonna break this down into two main categories, residential, so if you have your own primary home, if you rent out a residential rental, or even multifamily, if you've got 100 units of multifamily, those have very different consequences from policies from the federal government. On the other hand, when I talk about commercial real estate, I'm going to be talking about industrial. I'm going to be talking about office, retail, some of the other asset classes that are differing lease structures, which lead to different financial metrics for your return. So another metric that I want to look at is some of this data that I think a lot of people say intuitively that the election creates uncertainty. The data, however, shows that while uncertainty may be true, people still transact. According to a survey going back to 2004, during election years, there's only 0.9% decrease in transaction volume in an election year. So people may be uncertain, but they are still transacting with that uncertainty. What is far more impactful to transaction volume is interest rates. And so I don't want to go into the Fed too much on this. I really want to focus this on is a Republican president better for property values? Is a Democratic president better for rental income? And again, what we're seeing on the Democratic side is that rents have gone up under a Democratic president. So look at this statistic about the rental increases during Biden's administration versus rent increases. It's great if you're a landlord and it's bad if you're a tenant. I think to some degree, landlord and tenant rent increases are directly a zero sum game. And so if this matters to you, rent is going up under a Biden Dem presidency and rents go down uh, under a Trump presidency. The Trump presidency lasted from 2016 until 2020. So we're gonna be looking at data from that period and bleeding a little bit into the post COVID era. Although that type of recessionary event caused crazy impacts and so I do want to acknowledge that a president should not take credit or blame for things that occur in the very first six months or three months of their presidency. We're going to exclude a lot of the psychological effects. We don't want to worry about what the market thinks on futures when somebody becomes elected. We're going to try to only look at the data that is presented as factual observations from real estate after they are president and a little bit after their exit. So 2016 to 2020, we saw two major things happen, and that was asset price increases as well as inflation. We're going to throw some of this up here, but if we want to see, I, I think it's very interesting. Inflation was up, I won't say substantially, but rates of inflation were uh, at that 2% target, they, they flirted with 3% for several years, but generally inflation stayed at the 2% target. So if you were banking on inflation improving or discounting the increase in sales, you know, inflation was very reasonable. And so real property prices tracked with that inflation increase. And at the end result, if you had a single family residence, if you had rentals, those appreciated as you were able to mark to market. Now, on the other hand, we look at the Biden presidency from 2020 through the current day, and we have seen asset prices go through the roof. 
but it's also inflationary. So your real earning power, just because your asset goes up by 10% in value, if the cost of living and your cost of expenses also increase by 10%, you haven't really made any real gains. And so it's been very interesting to see the Biden presidency has had two very clear impacts. If you own your own home, your, your cost, you're essentially a gross lease, you're responsible for everything, you have seen incredible increases. While the basis, while the asset value has gone up, so have your expenses. And we all know this, insurance has gone up. Uh, we can see on this chart how much insurance premiums have gone up on average in Texas and Florida. California has had a lot of insurers drop out of the state. High winds, fire risk, uh, flood, uh, all of the other costs of replacement costs have just gone through the roof. And so insurance has gone up. And if you as a landlord or the owner are responsible for paying for those costs, it doesn't matter if the value of your home or your residential property has gone up by 10%, your expenses have also increased. And so for that reason, the Biden presidency has actually not done well for those types of owners. On the other hand, if you own industrial, if you own office, we've seen that net leases allow those increased costs to be passed through the tenant. And so the real return for investors has actually improved if you're in a net lease type structure. And that's an important distinction because if you're an investor and you own real estate, you need to know what type of lease structure you have because they have different impacts. The residential, obviously they get the benefit of mark to market. You get to change your lease rates every year. Um, and hopefully your income can increase as your expenses increase. However, we've seen rent decreases in multifamily and they're only recently starting to come back. And so I would say for a large part of the Biden um, presidency, rates have gone up, rental rates have gone up, expenses have outpaced those, and finally we're starting to see rents climb a little bit to try to match pace. So let's look at this graph here. We have a um, residential housing. This is a, a data from Zillow. And for the Trump presidency, I'll basically peg the gains during his presidency from 200 to the adjusted price of call it 248. Um, so we're about 48 basis points of adjustment. Uh, this is the, I, I believe this is a case Schiller index. So 100 is, is even. And so we've seen those increases for, for the Biden presidency. It has gone from 274 all the way to 325. For the Biden presidency, we see this residential index at 324 to 274, which is also a 50 basis point increase on this index. So actually the gains are nearly identical. The key difference is the interest rates. During the Trump presidency, you're still able to sell your home and realize those gains and then trade into a newer home and kind of maintain that. And that's what's giving this feeling of a, a lack of affordability is I may have a lot of gain, but my equity is trapped. I'm unable to take on a new mortgage at current rates and buy anything near to what you have now or what you recently sold. Another key data point on the residential side is that the median home price has increased by $52,000. And that coupled with rising costs of the home ownership, and same for residential, if you have multifamily, the insurance premiums, the property tax increases has made a lot of residential affordability unattainable for either investors or for homeowners. Let's look at this graph on historical returns on real estate going back almost 60 years. It is incredible, but the sum line is that the Democratic presidents average a 9% return on real estate, Republican presidents average 8.2%. For me, that difference is nominal. If you're watching this video, you're going to make more money or lose more money based on single asset. So I'm gonna wrap this up by saying that you should not let the outcome of the presidential uh, election impact your real estate investing choices. Make lots of offers, find good properties, manage them well, and you're gonna be great regardless of Trump or Biden. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.